bro, I hear you're the guy to go to for you, your troubles, and I just don't know what I'm going to do next format. Sprite and tournaments sound really scary, and the current threats are just as scary. So what do I do? What do I use in my side deck? And how do I deal with these cards going forward? Hey man, I'm glad you called and you're just in luck because I'm literally filming a video right now. I'm going to break down the five type of side deck cards that you need for next format. I guarantee that if you use these cards, you will do well, you'll top your locals and you'll win those awesome rewards. Stay tuned to find out what those are. Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Shard. I create content for the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG and Master Duel. And this is a really, really exciting video because I'll be breaking down the five best type of side deck cards to use next format. The next format will be hopefully diverse, but if not, we're going to prepare for these scary threats like Sprite and Terrellement, Floodgates to use against them, Hand Traps to use against them, powerful spell cards to use against them. So yeah, stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe because I'll be making more content just like this one. So you're prepared for next format and can dominate your locals. So the first card on the list, my favorite card to use as a side deck option, maybe as a main deck option, is Dark Ruler No More. And the reason why is this card outright stops a lot of the current meta threats and has been doing so for the last two or three years or however long since it was released. And what this card does is because your opponent cannot respond with monster effects on resolution, they can't negate it, right? So you're allowed to outright negate all their monster effects. You, they don't lose battle damage, however, that doesn't matter. You're going to break their board and you're going to have the advantage. So Dark Ruler Normal is going to be great. The Splite board usually ends with a Splite Elf, a totally awesome, and maybe a third body like IP Mascarena or a Splite Monster. If you Dark Ruler, you're shutting down Elf, which brings back the second Toad. You're shutting down the first Toad, which means it doesn't negate anything. And then you're shutting down the IP Mascarena. That's a big one. That's the sleeper here. So, you know, Dark Ruler Normal is going to be an incredible card next format. If you side deck this card, if you draw it, if you use it, you will guarantee break their board. Just be careful of the hand traps though. Against Terra Elements, the Dark Ruler does not do as much simply because they do more stuff on your turn. However, you can get rid of their first turn boss monsters, so to speak, like Dragon Stepelia or the Kaleido Heart or just about anything else that sets up a fusion summon. So I think Dark Ruler Normal is a good card to use against Terra Element. However, just keep in mind, you might want to hold it and use it after they've done more milling and fusion summoning. Okay guys, so uh, real quick, this is Edding Shahid here, new t-shirt. Um, and I completely forgot to talk about Ultimate Slayer, a card that's incredibly, incredibly influential in the next pack. And I'm coupling this with Dark Ruler Normal as the no fuss removal. That's why I'm going to call coin this uh, side deck strategy where you are not fussed about your opponent's monster negation because the opponent can't respond with monster effects. And the best thing about Artemis Slay slash Ultimate Slayer is if you send, if you're taking care of fusion monsters, like the uh, the Kaleido Heart, the Kit Kalos, the Winda, you actually plus really, really nicely because for one, Entis is a fusion monster. If sent to the grave, pops a card in the field. That's, you're popping two cards, now you're getting rid of two cards. If you send the Garuda fusion monster that comes out of uh, Power of the Element, you get to draw a card. That's insane and there's more cards just like that so i think ultimate slay is one of the best best cards to put in your toolbox when you know you're going second i think it's gonna be a really influential card going forward and i'm really really excited about using this card myself and remember the best part about this card it shuffles it into the deck that card does not go to the graveyard that boss monster doesn't go to the graveyard it can't be reborn there's just crazy things you can do with that also mirror jade and cards like mirror jade their effects won't trigger if they're shuffled into the extra deck because they go into it face down. I think that's the logic behind it. You're actually dodging that part as well. So this card is actually a huge branded counter. So yeah, that's Ultimate Slayer. Okay, next card. These are my favorite ones because they're so easy to use. It's Lava Golem, Sphere Mode, and just about any Kaiju. Now, Lava Golem is probably the most effective one simply because having two monsters on your opponent's field is kind of normal. Lava Golem tributes over two of them to special summon. You lose your normal summon for that turn, but there are decks that play around that. Shut down boards like Splite. Splite end on the Elf and Toad, Lava Golem. Uh, Terra Element end on the Windows, Stepelia, Kaleido, Sphere Mode or Lava Golem. And then obviously against cards like Exorcist it's not as effective, I'll be honest. But again, that's why we have the board wipes instead. Honorable mentions for Lava Golem, shuts on the Brandy strategy really, really badly. You tribute over the Jade, you tribute over the other monsters in the field. Suddenly their Chimera is absolutely dead. Third set of cards is Kurikara Divine Incarnate, Nibiru the Primal Being, the unexpected board wipes that your opponent probably won't expect. Now, Gigantic Splite can shut down the Nibiru, unfortunately. However, we have cards like Kurikara Divine Incarnate, and Nibiru, which can be uh, comboed with cards like Infinite Permanence and Effect Veiler, giving us 
that board wipe. So I think that's a part of the Nibiru Kurikara uh, strategy that people forget is you can chain it with a second hand trap to actually break the board. And that's why I think these cards are really scary and why they'll be unexpected. People won't expect to run into them because they're not as effective, but if you combo it with another hand trap, you might just break the board and win the game. A few of the fourth type of side deck cards, we have Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twister, Harpist Feather Duster, Lightning Storm, Evenly Matched. These are board breakers that really demand an answer at the time. And if you remove that card off their field, they don't have that uh, level of uh, playability on your turn. And that's really powerful. If you shut down the Exorcist that spell and traps, they end up summoning their monsters when there's nothing to actually banish and you have a really good time because now you know exactly what to deal with going forward and you can react as so. Cards like Cyclone and your spell and trap removal are really good next format. My hot take is the floodgates will run rampant. Maybe, maybe Mystic Mind is going to survive the ban list. If it does, we're just going to have to get used to potentially maining some of those spell trap removals. And I think Twin Twister and Cyclone are the best choices. In my opinion, I think Evenly Mashed is the most fun one to use. Darker than normal, Evenly Mashed is the best combo in the game. And if you resolve that, you still have, what, three, four cards in your hand? That's enough to combo off. So, yeah, those are the best ways to deal with, I think, threats in the meta going forward. And if you side these in, you're going to have a good time. Yugo has become such a power creep game that we have these absolutely insane floodgates that read insane effects. And when a certain meta card starts getting popular, these old school floodgates start getting popularity. Cards like the Band Played On, Soul Drain, uh, Mischief of the Gnomes. These cards are really expensive right now as well. I hope they reprint some of these in Tournament Pack 20. Regardless, you know, these cards are going to be what you use to shut down Sprite. Sprite lose to the band play dons, Digi and Dirge, D Barrier, Rivalry, Gozen. But just keep in mind if they have Sprite Carrot on board, they can negate your spell or trap effect from resolving. But if you can deal with the carrot, you are just going to floodgate them and then they can't really do anything. Although remember, the fourth set of side deck cards deal with that. So it's kind of like a back and forth kind of thing. So just remember, side deck is really, really important in Yu-Gi-Oh! And if you prepare the right way, you're going to have a good time. Against Terra Element, it's a fusion deck. If you've played the previous format I did myself, you would know how uh, annoying it is when someone resolves d barrier against your branded deck. And you can do the same thing, actually. However, there's more floodgates. Because Terra Element always, always resolve their effects in the graveyard, Soul Drain is an incredible, incredible card to shut them down. Keep in mind, in November, they get their max support, uh, but for now, they're still going to be a threat, and that's why we would run cards like the Soul Drain. I think D-Barrett is the number one side deck card in the meta, guaranteed 1,000%. I think everyone's going to run D-Barrier, and that's why going forward, it's the safest card to use. But Soul Drain does really well. It can stop Eldritch cards, I believe. And then, of course, we have the Rivalry Gozen because they have Aquas, Dragons, and some other types, as well as Water and Dark. So just keep that in mind. You know, there are floodgates to deal with all these cards, and I think... If I didn't mention it already, the fifth set of side deck cards are going to be your game winners. So I've just gone over the five type of side deck cards you want next format. But that being said, there are some honorable mentions. I do want to shout out Cypher and Gamma is an incredible side deck card. If you know you're going second, drawing the Gamma, having normals on the field because you're going second means it's going to resolve. If Gamma resolves, it's really tough to play around that because the negation follows the card it's negating. You can't dodge it like an Imperm or Valor. So keep that in mind. Gamma has good synergy in Sprite because it's a level two. There are some weird synergistic ways to use it. So I think, yeah, Gamma is going to be a really powerful card going into the next format. But overall, I think these are the only cards you need. If you own these cards, that's great. Use these cards and do well in your locals. I would recommend chasing these floodgates as soon as you can. They are going up in price. Cards like the Mischief of the Gnomes is really expensive already. And that card is really good in Terra Element because it has a graveyard effect. So do your own research as well into the specifics of these floodgates and cards like this. Of course, let me know in the comments how these cards do. Did I miss any cards as well? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know and you know include these going forward. But yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys find it educational. I'm going to do more videos just like this one. I've got a Path Elements unboxing next week and some very key updated deck profiles that I'm really excited to do. So that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.